off, Wimp listeners. And welcome to episode 13, lucky number 13, woo, of the season 3 of On A Wimp Podcast. I'm still trying to think about how I'm going to say these things, but if listeners, if you've been paying attention in however you listen to podcasts, I've been leading off with episode 40. This is going to be episode 41. So just, it's, I don't know. I'm trying to, it causes much chaos as Paul possible. wants chaos in oh. his life. Uh, much, to, <laughs> much to Jabari's disappointment. Because Jabari is like, pick a number. Is it going to be 13 or is it going to be 41? <laughs> Never! And, and Paul uses Hi guys. this podcast as an outlet for his normally structured <laughs> and orderly life. <laughs> never! You'll never take me alive. I'm Paul. <laughs> I'm Jabari. I'm Shadow. And I'm Grover. I'm back. Welcome back! back. <laughs> Jabari! <laughs> Only for this episode. Tomorrow. I've, mm. you no, know, you mean mm. next week. Because missed... <laughs> we record this yeah. once a week. Uh, this episode, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it works we, we, anymore. <laughs> I was going to ep- say, whoa. Ep- episodic <laughs> weekly episode that if you're not here every week, then we record just, this. You know, we record this live on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Don't you guys know? 5 p.m. Pacific time. As, <laughs> and, and, Shadow, and Shadow edits the episode on, on the, fly. the fly. It's so instantaneous. It's, <laughs> it's picture perfect with all the gaffes, with all the, the Paul Bajas. <laughs> and all the Grover awkward pauses. It's all in there. Clear glorious. as crystal. And we even edit in we even <laughs> edit in Jabari's voices to make oh, yeah. sure we miss him properly. <laughs> <laughs> so Jabari, have you been tuning into the episodes during your like little brief hiatus or or you have just no idea what we've been up to? I have no idea what you guys have been up That's to. Well, <laughs> um, you know, when I upload the videos <laughs> and such online. Yeah. Um you know, I I have to go through the whole episode, um, looking for certain words and stuff too, um, like oh, descriptions yeah, and yeah. such. So I listen to, I listen to what's going on. So I know what I think I know what, what you guys were talking about last time. It's in there. I listen to it. It's just really fast. I have to play the videos pretty quickly because, um, I have like super limited time. So sometimes I only have like like an hour to upload the video before I have to go on to my new adventure. Are are you are you still doing the thing where you're parsing out like your time, your day, minute by minute, hour by hour? Like I will spend 30 minutes and 59 seconds on this task, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is, is that still a thing you do? I mean most of the time I'm just I'm just at work and I don't know okay. um you know the next time I'm going to have a break or next time I'll be able to um, do something outside of that work. So um, whatever um, time that I have, I have, um, I just try to um, get things done as much as possible. So um, I mean, yeah, that that's more than fair for sure. I was so gonna say, in- dang, yeah. that's super structured. That's way too structured. I, I'm kind of <laughs> guilty of doing. No, it's I'm, more like oh, I'm kind of guilty of doing huh? the same thing. Like for like, I have to work on Celestria once a day. Like I have to push something by eleven fifty nine every day. Otherwise I, I get upset with myself like that I don't I don't do it. <laughs> it's not maybe not as structured as what Jabari was talking about, but I like once a day, if I don't see something push to the repo, I get like upset at myself, like, oh I let some I let a day go to waste because I didn't work on something, you know. So I oh, I kind of I, I feel you, wow. Jabari. <laughs> Damn, and I thought I was hard on myself, but like, apparently not. <laughs> there is so much to unpack with that statement, Grover. I could write yeah. my dissertation on that. I feel like the day is wasted like, because I didn't push. A couple of days ago, I was, thing. I was, I was playing, I was playing uh, one of the games I'm going to talk about next week. But um, I looked at the time and said twelve oh two. I'm like, damn it! <laughs> Why <laughs> I didn't push my work? <laughs> <laughs> so there's like one push at like 1203 <laughs> with the work that I did the previous day and I was so upset. I went to sleep upset. You had fun <laughs> for one minute too long and you were therefore <laughs> not productive. It didn't matter what else you did that day. 
just no. Grover. That can't be healthy. That, no. Like, not healthy at all. But Grover, if it's something you're going to talk about on the podcast, you could say you were working. There you go. Yeah. Technically. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> See, Shadow's coming in there with the save. It's not about it's not about therapy or making me feel better. It's coming with it's coming with justifications for working. Because that that <laughs> is the that is the backbone of our generation as millennials. Shadow yeah. the enabler. Shadow the enabler. <laughs> I mean you guys yeah. aren't wrong. You've known me a long time. That is yeah. certainly a thing I do. <laughs> we need a, we need to commission one of our artist friends to draw Shadow's Chibi, wearing a cape with you know S. I, I, I make sure I say this correctly. I don't want to say anything. Shadow the Enabler is that an acronym for anything? S T E? No. If it isn't, <laughs> we'll put it on a Chibi. Yeah. Side. Double double check that first, please. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're gonna give me an acronym after some kind of complicated rare disease oh no <laughs> oh no no shadow's already enough trouble on on their own i don't need to name it after some kind of annoying <laughs> pester on the world oh, my anyways grover um or should i say the anchor of the grover news network yeah you have a uh, you have some breaking news for us well the day that we recorded this uh jeff Keeley, i don't know if you guys know who he is he hosts the game awards every december uh, and he's also hosted um a lot of e3 conferences but him and e3 don't really get along anymore and he had a very public departure from it i think it was either 2000 2020 or 2019 i don't know one of those years so he's like, I'm going to do my own thing. And he made the, the Summer Game Fest. So as soon as, the, as soon as E3 announced that they were canceling this year, he went on Twitter like not 10 minutes later. He's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're hosting the Summer Game Fest June XXX of, of uh, June XYZ, I should say. June XYZ of 2022. And today he uh, tweeted out that it's the, the exact date of the Summer Game Fest is going to be uh, Thursday, June 9th this year. Not only is it going to be streamed, you know, through normal internet ways, right? Through your Google and your... <laughs> I sound like an old man. Through your Google <laughs> and your YouTube Google. and your TikTok. <laughs> it, it's also going to be it's also going to be streamed uh, in IMAX theaters. So that'll be cool. I'm not taking the day off work to go do that. I think, Paul, you will, you'll probably be off of work by then. I'll, I'll be off by work by then. Yeah. So you're, you're, use, your, use your face space. And your, Facey space? You, am I, your am I my face. tube? <laughs> am I tube? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny that the old people took over some of those mediums. It's, it's kind of funny how that We're works. the old one. Um, We're getting there. Um, anyway. Uh, um, slowly but surely. <laughs> and you're only as old as you feel. There, yeah. <laughs> I'm, That's I'm feeling pretty old these days, Shadow. I'm feeling pretty old. These <laughs> to days. be fair, Paul, if any one of us is old, I, you'd be it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am, I am the oldest one in, in recording this podcast. Yeah, but you're, you are the anchor <laughs> of this podcast. I just report the news. No, you're the anchor of GNN <laughs> Plus. GNN Plus, so yeah. That. Already going the, longer the, than CNN Plus. I think we beat them by like a day. <laughs> uh, no, so so yeah. <laughs> so Summer Game Fest is is uh, uh, Thursday, June 9th. and then it's going to be followed up by the Microsoft Xbox conference, which is on uh, Sunday, June twelfth. I'm double checking here. Yeah, Sunday, June twelfth. Um, so they're going to be making uh, they're probably going to be making more news about like acquisitions because Microsoft's been on an acquisition kick. Right. I'm not I, I, I don't know for sure. I have no knowledge of this, but the last couple of years they've been acquiring businesses left and right. So it's safe to say that they've probably got more up their sleeve. Um, and I'm really excited to see what they have with Xbox Game Pass, because that's that's really what has them, in my opinion, leading the current console generation. Um, because they, they're, yeah, the Xbox game pass is just a really great deal. And I don't even like rent quote unquote renting digital games. So, you know, for me to say that that's pretty good. Yeah. I think now Nintendo is working on uh, something similar to that and maybe PlayStation. PlayStation's oh yeah. Already doing something yeah, play, like that. yeah. And PlayStation's coming up with where you can play like, uh, all the old PS one and PS two games. 
uh, on a streaming ser- like streaming through your PS4 or your PS5, and I think that's launching next month. Next month, damn. Yeah, it's gonna be part of the PlayStation Plus thing. So, oh, okay, got it. Maybe and this, at, a, at no additional cost, or is it like part of your PlayStation Plus? It, like, so there's gonna be different tiers. There's there's one where you get like, oh, of course there is. Oh yeah. my gosh. And PlayStation <laughs> Now subscribers get like automatically upgrades to like the middle tier. So I bought PlayStation Now just so when it converts over in June, I'll automatically be in that middle tier for a year. But nice, people, people, that's smart. yeah, people were stacking up on um, PlayStation subscriptions, and Sony they they put some kind of into it. I don't I don't know the exact thing of what they did, um, but they they want they stop people from stacking up their subscriptions early. <laughs> I said, oh, it'll only cap out at this time or something like that. But yeah. I'm sure I'm sure there will be a way Sony will screw over these like people stacking up these subscriptions and like, nope, no, nope, that you did it wrong. We <laughs> want you to no play do what play our games, but only our way. <laughs> That's what That's Nintendo. Want. <laughs> That's the Nintendo uh, way. Well, no, yeah. We've <laughs> we, we've we, had an entire yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah. If you want to see my rant about Nintendo, what was it? I don't know what episode it is. Episode. Cut. I feel like it's every other episode. No, no. <laughs> oh, come on. No, it's not that often. I think it was episode eight or seven. It's in the title, Nintendo Fanboys or some crap. Yeah, so if, if, if you want to see my, my more detailed rant on Nintendo, look at that. But um, with Microsoft, they have publicly said that their rival is not other console manufacturers anymore. Their rival is against Game Pass, right? And so... You know, right now, Microsoft has a big advantage on Game Pass because it's applicable to both, I want to say both PC and, and, and the console, but it might have two different plans. I'm not sure. Um, but there's been a lot of games like Age of Empires um, that I would play with friends. I was like, oh, you know, do you have Age, Age of Empires 3? And then they would at, you know, ask me back, is it on Game Pass? And I was like, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, I, then I guess I have it. So they go and download <laughs> it, right? <laughs> And then we would go and play. Um, whereas I'm, I'm, I'm admittedly of the old school. I do not have Game Pass. Um, mm-hmm. I only, I, I, I buy the games because I want the. Even if it's I'm quote unquote owning the digital license to it, um, I, I still want that 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 sense of I, I, I can play it whenever I want, regardless of if I'm subscribed to something or not. And mm. you know that comes from the game collector in me. But I, I still see the value in game Xbox Game Pass, and I hope others. Um, Take note, and I'm looking forward to what Xbox has to bring to Game Pass, and you know other announcements on the 12th of June. And that's and that's how the news goes. <laughs> Yesterday's news today, <laughs> and um, Jabari. I guess there's, I guess we might have to make Wim India announcements around that same time, just to. Uh, oh yeah, align ourselves. Yeah, right, 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 Jabari. So, yeah, it sounds like mm, we're right. Yeah. Right, Jabari. <laughs> Be drowned out by the all of the good news happening around that time. Sure, we could totally. We, do we, that. we we just gotta right, find the right hashtags to piggyback off. Of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a that's part of it. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's actually yeah. smart. Um, whatever's trending yeah. at that time. Um, See, I'm listening. I'm you learning. You are. You are. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Paul. Yeah. Hey, no. Speaking of Shadow being proud of me, there was a total moment in the pre-podcast production phase. Before we record, because right. you know we do this, we do this live, right? So Tuesdays at there's five. a part where, where I I differentiated gain and volume, and that like made Shadow's heart flutter just a little bit. Yes, and, um, I was just and, um, like, "Yay, I'm proud of you!" Because <laughs> normally people get those mixed up and think they're the same thing. They are no, not. They are not. Um, gotta make sure you say the "not" part, like just elongate the "o" and the just, "t." They no. aren't. <laughs> they aren't so uh actually quick story i had to go into the the district where i work at uh, they have a in district radio station and when i went in, when i went in there and to record whatever i had to record i think it's for a radio show or whatever i was doing the uh the quote unquote audio engineer um complimented me on you you know your way around a recording booth and i'm like Hey, you tell me where to stand and where to say and when to say it. Everything's going to be A-OK. Please don't threaten me. (laughs) (laughs) I trained you well, Paul. (laughs) 
Yeah, but it was more um more ski- uh, operant condition as opposed to classical conditioning. So you know, <laughs> take take that for what it's worth. Um, also, your district has a radio station. Yeah, so oh, one wow. of our schools. In the I'm district, intrigued. <laughs> one of the schools has is the uh, Fine Arts and Multimedia Academy, or something like that. Without trying to give away the name of the district or any of that. Um, so they have an on-site like recording booth, like they can do TV broadcasts if they really wanted to, and and things like that. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome what you can do with some federal funding. So that's cool. <laughs> Man, yeah, I very... would like to go to that school. Yeah, the middle school I substituted at frequently, they had like a green screen for their mm-hmm. uh like morning announcement kids. Yeah. But that's about it. I mean, they had other cool things, but like as far as like audio stuff goes, they had nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh yeah, you know, as much as you want to say radio is a dying medium, right? Um there's still a connection to radio that I think will long outdo what the need for radio what really is. Um, I mean, there's still yeah. You will sound like you're on old time radio, <laughs> you know that that kind of thing. I right? didn't know so. Art LeBeau was speaking in this podcast. <laughs> wow, <laughs> we've, we've really come up in the world if we get Art LeBeau on this podcast. You know him, him and his oldies but goodies. Um, Jabari, I was going to ask you real quick, going mm. just step, taking a step back. Do you think, you know, this new Summer Game Fest is going to gain any traction, like TakeOver, where E3 is kind of languid over that release period? What what do you... I want to just give you more time to talk, because I haven't heard your your beautiful <laughs> voice in a while. <laughs> well, shoot. I mean, I, I'm i just hearing about this, like, now, since uh, Grover brought it up. I didn't know this was going on, but um, um, what's his name? Uh, Jeff Keeley. Jeff- Jeff Keeley, he's the um, owner of um, Shovel Knight, right? Is that what you said? No, no, no. He does the uh, Spike Game Awards, and he did. Uh, he hosted E3 for a while too. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have and no idea what to say about it. I'm just hearing about it. Out. This is news to me. Shadow's gonna cut that part out because that'll make us look bad. <laughs> and go. <laughs> uh, I mean, or just, or just, and three, or just bleep. two, one, and go again, Jamari. No, no. Just leave that in, but just bleep it out. Just bleep. Right. And then and, and have Grover say, and that'll make us look bad. And it'll it'll be really uh, great. That'll be great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he's the uh, the E three uh, the older um, E three organizer, then um, you know he has some weight. He probably has those connections. So we'll see yeah. how this goes this year. Um, you know, uh, digital conferences. I feel like they're not that effective but then again i haven't been to too many and actually i just went um joined uh coursera's on conference um that started yesterday ended today and um nobody's posting stats about um how many people actually attend like you can never tell but it seems like it was really successful so um with this coursera, one you said or who is it coursera the um okay. education company it's like udemy oh uh, okay God, it's like the cheap cousin of Udemy. I don't know because like Udemy is like cheap. this course is like three hundred fifty bucks, but I've never seen it. I've never paid for a course that for three hundred fifteen bucks. It's always yeah, like well, eighteen ninety nine or twelve ninety nine or eleven ninety nine because you get them on sale. But like the way that Coursera works, everything is free. But if you want a certificate, you have to pay thirty bucks. Yeah. Okay. That makes so, sense. So it's the cheaper cousin. Uh, we to, uh, we are we are not sponsored by Udemy and we are not sponsored by Coursera. We would like to be. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, <laughs> if you're listening, feel free to reach out. I do fabulous ad reads. Anyways, um, so with with this new ways of digital, like I've I've attended digital conferences uh, in my for my day job, and th- I'm not a fan. I'm I'm not a fan of. The structure of it, I'm not a fan of how you get to the speaker and then the interaction within the room. And even though I can just lounge around my house and log into my computer and attend them as as needed. Um, shoot, I remember recording. Was it was it on a whim or something else? Um, we went and then we went to lunch 
Raising Cane's. Grover was there and Jabari was there. And I was listening to the uh, the conference on my way to Raising Cane's. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys remember that at all. <laughs> Back uh, in the middle of the of the of the yeah. the deep part of the pandemic. So. Yeah. No, oh, I don't remember that. Was that before I started editing the podcast? I think Jabari was still editing it back oh. then. So, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe we can have Shadow t- take a look and take a stab at some of those earlier episodes. <laughs> I was hearing it, and and and, J- and Jabari, I sound like I'm recording with a potato on some of them. Like, I had no mic etiquette. I didn't do anything right. Were they raising Kate's <laughs> potatoes? Ooh, good question. <laughs> they they were probably in and out potatoes that go oh, like yeah. or baker's potatoes. Oh, baker's go, potatoes. They, they, go, yeah, they, uh-huh. go, they go soggy as soon as you walk out the building. Oh man. Yeah. They're not so much French fries as they are potato noodles. <laughs> <laughs> potato noodles. <laughs> that's the that's episode. That's the thing. episode of that's the name of this episode. Potato noodles. <laughs> potato noodles. <laughs> Recording with potato noodles. I love it. No, but uh, going back, to, uh, building off of what you said, Paul, I've had, I've built, been to both in-person conferences that went really well, and I've been to in-person conferences that went really poorly. Um, the one that 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 does really well was the the Steam ones that they've been doing, um, where they try to highlight games that are coming out, because they put a lot of the power into the developers on their game pages, where you go and visit them during the festival, and they're doing streams, and they're doing this, and this and that getting feedback from the games and they have public demos or they'll have the they'll they'll time the uh, sales to be during that festival and i I feel like it's done really well because steam they take advantage of their platform and they do it really well um where i've seen it poorly is again e3 um i think part of the reason why they decided not to hold it this year was their e3 digital conference went so poorly last year um like I attended their digital conference. I walked the digital, quote unquote, walked the digital show floor. And like I went to all the, the digital booths and everything. And they said, oh, yeah, most of it was just a front that said, oh, yeah, just look at our conference on so and so date to see what 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 games will be showing. They had nothing exclusive for for people who have industry passes or anything like that. And I, I was like, this is a giant waste of time. The only good thing I got out of it was like a really nice avatar that I used as my social media profile for like half a year. <laughs> oh man. Task failed successfully. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> it was really bad. Like Square Enix the Square uh Enix booth, I was like, oh okay, maybe I might see some news about Final Fantasy 16 or there might be a demo or something like that. And I was like, nope, just just look at the just look at our and- Square Enix. Uh, YouTube conference uh, on Tuesday at 9 a.m. And that was it. And then it was just a big leave button. And that was it. Q. Well, that's Dang. Media. That's underwhelming. Yeah, I was excited. I was helping our, our people in our studio get signed up for the expo and everything. And I was like, no, no, this is. You you would think a, at best. a thing for video games would be like, I don't know, better than that. No, they like that's you could that's tell what we no, do. Yeah, like. you could tell there was no love. Uh, it was a rushed thing. Um, you know the 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 presentations themselves were great as always. You know, but I, I underwhelming, and I understood like this. They they'd rather cancel it than not have it. So yeah, well, they probably looked so bad after the last one. That like if they had another bad year, they nobody would ever want to do an E3 thing again. We'll find out next year. <laughs> Why not? Right? It looks like it's done. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think Summer Game Fest. We're wrapping this back around to the beginning. Summer Game Fest is gonna be the the spiritual successor to this. With all the heart and soul that E3 needed to have again, but yep, Jeff 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 Keeley is a man of passion. So, I think yeah, I think he will. He will he will do this right. All right, Jeff. All eyes on you. Yep. This summer. Sparkle baby sparkle. June 9th. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, Jabari, give us your best like trailer reading voice. In a world where <laughs> are everywhere. Oh, this <laughs> is everywhere. Oh no. And Shadow is gonna have to edit that out. Yeah, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> or, or no, the we, yeah, we, we just bleep, bleep the them. Whole thing. <laughs> 
There we go. Do your best narration, narrator. You buddy. guys curse and everything. I can't say. F- <laughs> <laughs> this is a family Jabari. friendly podcast. <laughs> All right, in nah, time. In nah, three, we... two, one. All right. Grover, Gro- Shadow has not responded to one of your and cut for a while now. <laughs> They, they know. They know. I either cut it or I go, nah, that could stay in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. When I listened to that, I was just, I just died. I'm just like, <laughs> it was not cut at all. So, like, this is great. <laughs> I will send you the unedited version of that clip. <laughs> that should be one of my ringtones. Like, just Jabari yelling, is everywhere. <laughs> Oh, no, Make don't. it specifically his ringtone and tell him never yes. to call you because you will get in trouble if that brings that work. You're, yeah, um, you're going to be sitting in a very serious my... meeting with the superintendent or a job <laughs> application. And, job application. Yeah, job and, application. And you're like, Mr. Vela, I think you are the perfect candidate for this position. Uh, when can you start? In a world. <laughs> <laughs> And some watch hash, hashtag watch people die inside. <laughs> or oh, bye bye job. <laughs> or slash bye bye job. Bye bye job. <laughs> I want to and Grover with the ad read. You. I want to be the cause of. I don't want to be the cause of you being fired from your job. <laughs> that <would be> Not <laughs> this time. More than that. Not this time. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Indie Devs, we're looking for games to show on a new segment of our podcast. If you are a developer and you have an indie game that you would like for us to review on the air, send us a DM with some codes uh, at at WHIMINDIE, W-H-I-M-I-N-D-I-E. We are on all of the social medias, on on the Facey Tubes and the in the MySpace. What else? What else are we on, Paul? The Facey Space? <laughs> the, the Tweeter? The Tweeter? The, the Twit Tube? <laughs> Are we on the dang TikTok? Oh, oh yeah, the, t- the TikTok. No, are, I, I don't think we're on TikTok. TikTok. We're not on TikTok. No, I, the, the top, the the top, the, the top tube. tube. <laughs> this ad read is amazing, by yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, yeah. If you have any Steam codes or itch.io codes of your indie game that you're working on, send us send it to us at WinMD on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, and we'd love to review it on the air. Man, so speaking of things happening, there's a full slate of games coming out later this year, and guys, I I, I can't for the life of me do do I want to splurge on a triple A game? I've reached a point in my adult life, and I think I said this on this podcast before, that I only buy one triple A game. That's all you really have adult. time for these days. <laughs> Well, what is time? Yeah, you know, <laughs> most of it's at, been the the playing Grand Theft Auto. I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but like I said before, Grand Theft Auto Online is a game I can pick up and put back down, and don't miss. And like, I won't right. miss anything. You know, I don't have to be. And I can time missions and whatnot. As Grover, you said, I have these the shit memorized. You know, from start to finish. But um, but just because I'm, I limit myself to one, you know, AAA game a year. My friends, on the other hand, present company mm-hmm. included, uh, they they do not. They 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 make it rain <laughs> games. And since I'm on a, I'm a, I'm on October birthday, they all come near October and then December. Yeah, throw away and your vacation time during. I would. Huh? I well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, the holidays are very video game full time. So I wanted to ask you guys, you know, because I have a I have a pretty diverse slate of games, right? I either have these big sprawling open world games, you know, Spider Man, Far Cry, you know, all those, or they they give you an illusion of open world where it's very linear. Like you have to do, like you can do it however you want, as long as Pokemon <laughs> Sword and Shield. <laughs> I see, but I I don't have right, that right. kind of game, right? Where so uh, or. It's it's essentially a rail shooter. It's like the Call of Duties and and whatnot, right? So just kind of go around the horn. What uh, what's your preference, open world or or linears? So mm. uh, I'll go first. So okay. um, 
I know everybody's into Elden Ring right now. Um, mm-hmm. Like, heck, half of my Final Fantasy fourteen group the, and and all, all the other podcasts that I listen to, other than the On a Whim podcast, um, they are all playing. You know, they talk about how, what the bosses they've been stuck on in Elden Ring and this and that. And I have like I I have a, I don't have time for this. Um, and uh, the last open world game that I played through was Xenoblade Chronicles two. Um, and I, I think I beat that at the end of last year. And after that, it was like, that was an 80 hour adventure. I, I spent, yeah, about 85 hours on that game and it was, I, I was done. I was like, okay, I'm balancing this out. Right. Then I played the last of us, which is complete opposite of open world. Right. It's as linear as you can get. Um, it is pretty much a rail shooter without the rails. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, um, it was kind of refreshing because with open world, sometimes you kind of, well, I can't speak for all three of you, but for me, I get paralyzed by choice. I log in and I'm like, am I going to do this or am I going to do this? And then I end up doing something completely different, right? Um, I beat The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild completely by accident. I was running away from one of those <laughs> spider laser things. I forgot what you call them. Shadow, oh, man, seen I them. hate those. Yeah, I was <laughs> running for my life. I was about to die and I just jumped off. And I jumped into this lake with a parachute. And next thing you know, oh, I'm in Hyrule Castle. And I looked, I was like, well, okay, I got the Master Sword. I got the 13 hearts or whatever. I'm going to try to finish it. <laughs> um, and so so I did. And I, after that, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this game. I, 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 I've seen what I needed to see. Um, and and that, that's the case for a lot of open world games. I know, Paul, we when, when time wasn't much of an issue, we used to play through a lot of Grand Theft Auto games together. And yeah, we focused yes, mainly we on the story. We never tried to do all the super side quest and could try to get all the hidden packages. We just want to see the story and finish it off and see the credits roll. Um, yeah. So um, for open worlds, like I'll, I'll explore it while I'm interested, but at some point it's like, okay, I'm going to go finish this now. I want to do something else. And then I'll always kind of balance it with something on the opposite side of the spectrum. And rat. How about you, Shadow? Where are you? Where are you at with linear versus open? So world? it depends on my mood, honestly, because like there. I like both kinds of games, um, but like sometimes I just want to get through and like play the game and experience the story, but other times like I guess my ADHD kicks in and I'm just like. <gasps> I want to run around and do weird things and not have to worry about the main quest. So, like, it really does depend on my mood. Like, gosh, I think the when I first got Final Fantasy XV, that was my first, like, I don't know, really big kind of more open world game because before that, everything that I had played was mostly linear. So, like, I spent, like, the first two or three hours of that game just running around and doing weird things yeah how far can i I, go what will these people say how will they react you know it's all these questions like are they gonna have special conversations on top of this cliff or something like that yep or um if i just keep running this way do i eventually run into stronger enemies um very fair yeah like so i just did a bunch of that stuff but i mean i that's why i like the open world stuff is it allows me to like get lost in the game but i don't necessarily have to follow the story unless i want to right um right and i don't know that appeals to me because you know i'm a very unfocused person sometimes (laughs) very very exactly (laughs) so um but i mean again those linear games are nice because they do keep me on track so like i'll actually finish a linear game Whereas, like, open world games, I am far more likely not to finish them. <laughs> Very, so, what would you say would be your favorite? If, if Final Fantasy wasn't a choice, uh, I'm going to guess uh, Kingdom Hearts would be your favorite. Oh, Kingdom world? Hearts is not an open world. Yeah, I'm I was going to say, I don't, I don't know. Oh, no. no it isn't. Oh, no. Then I've been. I've no, been it's, accepted. it's. It's pretty linear. It's though, like. From whenever, yeah, from it's from like. um. Two. Each Disney, like, I've only played the first one, and I've only played Kingdom Hearts uh, Chain of Memories, but it's like, you have, like, this hub world, like, you have this hub, 
and you send your ship to this through the hub to like the different planets the different disney planets and then you play like a like a space invaders kind of 3d game and then you go into that disney world which is very linear it's like you're going to a point a you're going to point b there's some kind of plot point then you fight a boss and then back to the hub world um or back to the hub it's it's definitely not what i would consider open world or shadow yeah. I, i'm sure you have more thought out thoughts no. on this I I was going to say the exact same thing you did. Kingdom Hearts is not an open world. It gives you kind of the illusion of open world in that like okay. You can go to yeah. other planets. But and I mean, I guess in Kingdom Hearts 3, you can kind of fly around in the space area. Um and I mean, I guess I would consider the space area to be open world a little bit, but even then it's limited. I think my my closest comparison to Kingdom Hearts would be Super Mario sixty four, like how you have that, that that castle area, right, and then you have all the paintings that you go to, but the paintings take you to different worlds and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No so. Problem. All right. <laughs> so got it. <laughs> to answer your question, my favorite open world game would probably be, uh, Legend of Zelda. Woo! Okay. I, yeah. I mean, and also, which would also you... consider I've never finished a Legend of Zelda game in my life. That's okay. Breath of the Wild <laughs> is my is my favorite <laughs> Zelda game because that was like before Breath of the Wild. Um, I would play Zelda games and I would just kind of put them down, and I I really had to drag myself to finish. Uh, I dragged myself kicking and screaming <laughs> to finish oh. Ocarina of Time because uh. I, I just couldn't get into it, right? It 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 had aged so badly sure. by the time. Like if you if I played it in nineteen ninety eight, I'm sure I'm sure I would have had a very different impression of it. Um, Fair enough. And I'm sure if I play Golden Eye today, I'd be like, "What are these controls?" <laughs> right? Same same kind of thing. Um, but um, when I played Breath of the Wild, I was I just could not put it down. I was like, "Oh, I, when as soon as I would finish a temple, um, I would go off and I I, I they they." put it right in view to I, oh, I could see another puzzle a- across the way or there's something else to do uh, that I would, you know, adventure my own thing. You know, the game didn't tell me to go here. I would just go until I was done playing. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what I like about that game is like you could do all of the things they put in your like view or you could do something else. Um, <laughs> right. Possibilities are endless. Exactly. But I would say my favorite Zelda game is Oracle of Seasons. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. that's a fun one. Yeah, I, I like just that bought one. That. Yeah. It's good. I think you'll like it. Yeah, I I, I did made sure to I made sure to buy both Oracle's games on my 3DS before you know when. <laughs> 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 we shall not we shall not discuss If you if you want to do that, watch so, episode 9 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, if you, you, know, know. you know. Jabari, I, I, I'm almost even afraid to ask because I know the answer. <laughs> but what what do you prefer <laughs> if your reaction to Shadow um and uh, Link games, Zelda games, are any indication? What? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> linear or open oh. world games? Mm. I don't know. It's hard. I can't really uh, choose one. Like, like Shadow made a good point. Um, they said that on uh, the linear ones, they are you could follow the story more, uh, while the open world ones, um, you know, you kind of create your own story. And um, if there is a story, you just you you got to pin. We call it ping pong back and forth to actually find it. Um, I love Breath of the Wild, but I also love the linear um, Legend of Zelda's as well. And um, Grover let me play, or Grover gave me Final Fantasy IX, and that's linear. It's huge. Oh, yes. But Best Final Fantasy. I was just like, this is freaking great. How come I never played a freaking Final Fantasy game besides going past a demo? Um from years ago. I was like, Wait. oh man, now I need to jump on. Uh-oh. Wait. <laughs> yeah. You've never played a Final Fantasy game? The only Except one I've demos. 
except from demos when pizza hut and back in the 90s came out <laughs> with a demo i think it was a for yeah. number eight or something i remember battling some spider some robotic spider yep and you have to run away the beach yeah i was yeah. just like what is this this oh. is great was eight and... the one with the junction system yes i hated that <laughs> i did not get very far in that game i was just like nope I hate this. That's the worst part of the game, but it could be abused so badly because if you keep drawing from enemies, you just stack 99 of spells onto one slot and you can pretty much kill everything at like level 10. You can kill the final boss at level 10 easily. <laughs> just, I'll just draw 99, just spend 10 minutes on it. You know, if you have the remastered version, just make it really fast. Draw, 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 junks it, <laughs> and then just, just one hit kill everything until you beat the story. And they're like, okay, I beat Final Fantasy VIII. That's how I did it. Oh man! It, it, no shame. <laughs> no I did not like that game at all. Oh, but man. you played it anyway. Yep. See, I'm a Final Fantasy nerd. Cause... I don't make <laughs> yeah. myself Fan play boy. games I don't like. <laughs> the music is great and though. Q, and cue the the, the 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 music the music <laughs> of eight though is still really top notch though. So no, Jabari, if you're gonna play another Final Fantasy game, I might get a lot of like angry people about this, but. The original Final Fantasy Seven. Uh oh. Yeah. Actually, um, Grover. I think Grover gave me seven. Oh, I highly I recommend so. it. Uh, the reason why I said I might get a lot of angry people is because you either like Final Fantasy Seven or you hate it. No, seven seven's a good yeah. game. It's an, it, it is a good game. It's an objectively but it gets... good game. A lot of I feel like the people who don't like seven, and there's people on Solo Cheetah team that hate seven. <laughs> they absolutely <laughs> hate it, but I feel like people don't like it. You know, you know, you know who, who you, you are, are if you're listening and you're not listening. But uh, the the for for seven, I I feel the 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 reason people don't like it is because oh that's the one that got popular. That's the mainstream one. Why yep. do you like seven when um uh, you know, there's these better ones that are out or whatever? But that was if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for that game, um, the other Final Fantasy wouldn't have been as popular as it is. Um, I feel like the equivalent of this is uh, Fire Emblem Awakening on the 3DS. Um, mm. If it wasn't for Fire Emblem Awakening, Fire Emblem would be the big mainstream success that it is now on the Switch and on on the 3DS. Um, because yeah, like, actually, they would have stopped making them. They would have stopped making Awakening. them. Yeah, because <laughs> they they were very niche titles. You know, they they yep. uh, the character did they weren't the character designs weren't that great. The story was really cliche, but people played it for like the tactical RPG ness of it. But when they when they did Awakening, they they were th- pretty much threatened by Nintendo. They said, if this isn't a, a blow away success, we're ending this franchise. So they, you know, they kept the mode for the older players that wanted it, but they've also they introduced character relationships. They they had came in with a, a, be, a way better art style. They they got better writers. You know, they they really put it in like this is going to be do or die, right? And it became that that was the Final Fantasy VII of fi- you know the Fire Emblem series, and seven was the same thing, right? Uh, you know, one through five are like. You know, I love Final Fantasy one through five, but they were medieval, old school, you know, castles and, you know, you know, very high fantasy. But seven was they turned it on its head. It's like this is another interpretation of the word fantasy. Um, and, you know, they they went for a modern aesthetic and and, you know, really standout characters and stuff that, that they just never did before. Um, and that that in my opinion, saved Final Fantasy and made it what it is. Yeah, that's also kind of where they started to be like, I guess, how to say what I'm going to say, over-merchandising the series. Yep, yep. Because they had um, Advent Children come off of that. Oh, yeah. And I think that was kind of the start of them going, wait, Final Fantasy can also be movies. (laughs) Yep, yep. Oversized swords, big shoes, belts. The, that te- yep. the, the Tetsuya Nomura style. The dream. Yeah. The dream. <laughs> the blonde Even hair. Dressed as half stylish as them. That would have been amazing. Because before before seven, like the they were all using uh Yoshitaka Amano's art where they all had like white hair, like all the characters had white hair and and it, it had like he had his own style, but when Tetsuya Nomura came in, he he really changed that and, and turned it on its head. Zippers. Zep, you know. <laughs> yeah. Zippers. 
Zippers. <laughs> zippers, yep. Yeah. Zippers, yeah. belts. Everywhere. <laughs> zippers and belts. Swords, cleavage. <laughs> yeah. Spiky yes. hair. Yep. Spiky hair. I mean, <laughs> all those are winners. I mean, doesn't matter who you are. <laughs> Some like are more just... winners than others, right? Zippers? I mean, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> I feel like we just described like the 90s aesthetic right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that Velcro <laughs> shoes. <laughs> oh man. So okay. Um, let me sure. let me ask you guys this: If uh, cult classics, right? You think of ga- like The Room, right? <laughs> it, probably the the worst movie. <laughs> what? Oh hi Paul. Made. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh hi Paul. Yes. Um, but people flock to it because it's it's a it's. A, it's you have to watch yeah. how bad it yeah. is. Like it's a train wreck. You can't look away. Um, but once it became, it got that notoriety and it became like cool to hate. All the people are like, "Oh, I don't want to watch it no more." It's like the hipster. Yeah, attack, I, I, right? I like the room when it was cool. Their... It was never cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. See, that's why you we watched it because it was. I watched cool, it because it was right? the April Fool's um, joke on Adult Swim. <laughs> Oh, really? Exactly. <laughs> For like I don't think years. I've ever seen it. They played it? Oh yeah. The... Shadow, it's a it's a must see on bad films. If you ever have like a bad film night, watch it. For oh, sure. alright. I'll give you another bad film suggestion. A movie called Transmorphers. Like, what is like a low budget transformers? <laughs> As in like <laughs> like animorphs from like Nickelodeon back in the no, day? Or like, like what low budget here? transformers. <laughs> It's a B movie for sure. <laughs> Low budget. I don't know. Something more like a C movie. I, I mean, it probably is like an F movie, but I mean, <laughs> if you want something to laugh at, how when, bad it is. There F you, go. you want something to... when when you when you want a troop, but you end up get when you want you want a team, but you end up getting no. F it's troop. like uh, okay <laughs> when you ask for McDonald's, but your mom says we have McDonald's at home, <laughs> and, and, and she's McDonald's vegetarian. At home is like. Oh, no. oh, that's yeah. I can't really eat anything. And there. the McDonald's at home, <laughs> and the McDonald's at home is uh, day old soggy baker. Uh, uh, soggy oh. potato noodles. Potato noodles. <laughs> <laughs> potato noodles. Paul, what, what was your question? <laughs> uh, I love it. So, just like that is right. You know, you guys mentioned that. Well, I like Final Fantasy before mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. You know, it got mainstream, and you know, all the zippers and the cleavage and all, all yeah. that stuff, right? So. Are there any games that you guys were like, I I played it before it became mainstream. Like, ha, I am the hipster now. Um, and I'm gonna put putting you guys on the spot. And you know, the um, maybe maybe I can start off with uh, I played the the Ace Combat series before anyone in our friend group that I even knew of. Um, so in freshman year, uh, or, or just before freshman year. Uh, so 2004 ish, I I got Ace Combat Five, which is the fifth game in the com- Ace Combat series, right? Real flight simulators, this like not Earth but Earth kind of alternate universe, alternate timeline, alternate continents, whatever, right? And I really enjoyed it, and um, I thought I was like, you know, it was it was it's a bestseller on in in Japan and all that. But I didn't know anybody who played it, right? And then our, our our mutual friend Gino shows up, and he he played it, and we were able to quote the game at each other and and whatnot. And I, I met more people within like my nerd group of friends who who played it, and I'm like, oh, I guess it is more mainstream than I thought it was. You know, unbeknownst to middle uh, high school Paul, that it's the bestseller for a reason. <laughs> it's got the red thing. On the PS2 for a reason, Paul. But um, it didn't make me not like it. But like when Ace Combat six and seven would come out, I'm like, oh, all right, it's Ace Combat. I guess I'll play them. So maybe I like I lost it a little bit because I like I I discovered this game among my peers, kind of thing, right? So I still like the Ace Combat series. It's kind of full of itself at this point, I think, um, as most big franchises do get sometimes. Um, so. I don't know. Did I buy enough loading time for some of you guys? Like <laughs> games that you you thought like I discovered something awesome, but then you find out everyone else likes it too. You're like, oh, uh, man, okay, yeah. I, I have 
I have two I guess. answers for me. I got a, the the one that everybody expects, and then a couple games that you don't expect. Um, so the one the one that everybody right, expects is Final Fantasy fourteen, right? That game sucked when it launched. It got um, redone, right? And then now it's the second most played MMO under World of Warcraft, right? You know, I I've definitely talked sure. about my thoughts on that game. So watch, listen to the other episodes for that. So I won't talk too much more about that one. Um, some of the other games, um, uh, one that Jabari will probably agree with me on, the Shantae series. Uh, mm. You know, the when it came out on Game Boy, it came out at the end of Game Boy Color. Like, Game Boy Advance was out, Game, <laughs> Game Boy Color was on death row, and the, the, the person was there with the, the electric chair, right? And that's when Shantae came out. <laughs> so therefore, it wasn't really that popular. Um, but now it got re-released. Um, not only did it got re-released, but it got re-released for the Game Boy Color through limited run, and then it, now they re-released it on Switch. Um, the old Game Boy game got re-released on Switch, which I thought was was amazing. Um, and I know Jabari has collect me, both me and Jabari have collectors editions of it. Um, and Don't. and you know they they were able to successfully kickstart sequels to it after the the series has kind of been in kind of development hell because they were like they, they tried to release on like we wear but you know how that went that was kind of its own little small thing that didn't last very long um then they tried to do dsi where and then that didn't work and then you know crowdfunding came out and then that's where i feel <laughs> shantae really became this big success um so yeah so shantae is one of them the other one uh similar thing uh, zombies ate my neighbors this was one of the the uh this it, zombies ate my neighbors was the first video game I've ever played. That's what when like my, my cousins came over with Super Nintendo, they uh, I was five and they put in zombies ate my neighbors and I was hooked. Like I got to level forty six and now I'm as a 31, 31 year old man I can't even get back past level thirty nine. <laughs> I don't know how <laughs> I did it as a kid, um, but uh, how do we yeah combination? seriously um you know um that that really had me i was i was just really hooked on that game and um that was one of my original arguments for the the stores closing down was that i would never have access to play this game again you know if if my my hardware died out right and sure. uh then disney bought out uh lucas arts because it was a lucas arts game um, and they re-released it under their banner for all the co- uh, all the current systems, and I was like, okay, cool. You know, Disney does give a, a crap about software preservation. I, I wasn't <laughs> expecting the mouse to care. Um, so you know, good good on uh, Disney and LucasArts for uh, you know keeping that alive and and bringing it uh, back into the mainstream, if you will. Got it. How about you, Shadow? Any any games that were like I liked it before it was cool. Uh, good yeah. question. Video game hipster. So US. I don't think I have any video games that are like that, but I got into video games later in life. Like I was in college when I got my first console, like my personal first console. Um, cause like I had an Xbox that I shared with my brother and like, sure, we played games sometimes and like I played Halo, but like, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, you know, Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts and going to conventions and stuff like that didn't happen until yes. Grover sold me his PS2. Oh yeah. We so, were hunting for that too. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. Were, we were hunting for PS2 games like all through. The yeah. Empire. I remember that. That was a good time. That was, yeah. But that was like 10... 11 years ago so like i don't really have any stories on like well i like that game before you do yeah um (laughs) but that is exactly the energy i wanted you to channel shadow you're welcome (laughs) um but i could definitely probably go off on like a whole tangent on anime because i used to be really big on anime like all of the stuff that's on netflix um Actually, all of the older stuff that's on Netflix that's anime, I definitely watched, uh, like, when I was in high school. Like, that's what I stayed up for um, and, like, hogged the internet for was to watch anime. So, like, or on High School Host Club, 
<laughs> that was that was one way back in the day that I watched and like, gosh, what else? Hogged up the old dial up, huh? Yeah. Parents well, that's why. Calls. That's why I stayed up until like three in the morning to watch the good animes. Yes. The good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a lot of trash ones too, but I don't remember what their names are. Um. So yeah, does that answer your question? Absolutely. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Jabs? Remind me the question. I had to, <laughs> I had to have it fresh in my mind it's for like, you to respond. You, you, you are like the worst person I would ever interview. <laughs> you repeat the question what? as you're like sipping water to generate more time. Why, why do you, why oh do you want this job? Where am I? First of all, <laughs> why am I here? No, I, I, I just, who are I just you people? The question fresh in my mind, so I'm. So I'm sure that I'm not going off on a tangent that's um, off course. No, but <laughs> see, but tangents are amazing. And on Honestly, Paul's just trying to get us to Jabari. an hour so we can end the show. <laughs> <laughs> so we can go to sleep. Jab- Jabari, are there any video games that you're like, I I found it first. Like I played it before everyone else did, or or maybe you you maybe maybe you relate to the part and you're like. Where has this been all my life? Kind of like what Grover was saying, and and yeah, Final fa- Final Fantasy. Uh, no, well, I mean, <laughs> example of ones that I was late to. That's a example oh, of okay. that one. But um, I would have to say, because I'm I'm going back to like like late '90s, early 2000s when Nintendo 64 came back. So or w- came out, and um, internet was. It was a popular thing, but you know, it's dial up and um you have access to the world out there, but not really. And also I'm like eight, so how much access do you really have or how much um conversations you go into? Did you know your AOL individuals? keywords? Very fair. Say it again. Did you know your <laughs> AOL keywords? Use keywords? No. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. But um like Every game that I picked up at that time, um, I didn't know how other people really felt about it. Um, like Nintendo 64 games, um, like me and my brother, we just played the games together. So everything was just new and uh, we don't know if anybody actually liked them because we only had uh, uh, only a few friends that actually played games and such. So, um, so. Yeah, besides staring into your name. That's what I was going to mention. Like, Super Smash Brothers, <laughs> like, Nintendo 64. Um, the only way um, I learned about that game was by staring into um, some people were having fun. They were, and, thousands, uh, yeah. they were playing a game called Super Smash Brothers. Little did I know, I'll be playing it um, still today. And, yeah, just looking through the windows. Um I only knew about <laughs> I only learned about Super Smash Brothers because I saw Nintendo people the Nintendo characters fighting on the TV and I was like, is this some kind of joke? Like, and this is Super Smash Brothers. I was like, oh, this looks fun. <laughs> so I, I rented it from Blockbuster. I never owned it, but I rented never. it. <laughs> yeah, oh, I didn't. The, I have it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't. You would. You would, Shadow. You could be sitting on a gold mine right now. Honestly, I probably. <laughs> I have my old N64. Um, <laughs> Me too. I think the only thing I have that's not original is a purple see-through controller. Um, <laughs> because my original one just kind of started bro- like breaking and like the joystick stopped working. So um, a very specific person we don't talk about uh, bought me a replacement for it. So that's the only thing I have that's not original. Uh, yeah. Uh, Me- <laughs> Me- Melee was the first one I owned. So. All right. Yeah, that, was, that was fun. One of these days, yeah, I, I should I, bust out my old N64, bring out all the controllers, and we have an old school party. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the Sounds game fun. that... On, uh, at, the, at the Women D Expo, we'll have The that. Women we'll D Expo. We need, we need more <laughs> listeners be before on, we can do that. That'll be on baseline behind the good year. <laughs> you know the place. <laughs> if you know you know oh, man. you pass the by the two security guards felt. in front of the wheat shop and then go behind the good year <laughs> and down the alley <laughs> <laughs> and, and you'll see it you'll see a, a, a wooden sign 
with Women the Expo. <laughs> Sticky <laughs> note. Misspelled words and stuff on the website. <laughs> no, it's like the backwards E. Yeah. Like the little I'll, I'll be sitting hat. there with the church. I'll be sitting there with Church's Chicken. It'll be great. <laughs> and I'll be there with a Nintendo 64 and an old school TV. Yes, perfect. Oh, <laughs> it, the, the, it has to be the kind with the box still in the back. Oh, of it. Like CRT, no CRT, yeah. It's good. A CRT all the way, mandatory. I will try my best, Paul. Um, <laughs> you haven't, you haven't let me down yet, Shadow. It's a, no, no. I was a, gonna say I've certainly let you down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put these expectations on me. <laughs> Good, good times. So, so Jabari, with with life going the way it is, are you like finding any time for games, or do you have to sparse it out? Like, I have thirty five minutes for quite a lot. <laughs> well, I kind of want to go back to that conversation um, that we had before. Um, the game that I was going to choose was um, a game called Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Oh um, yeah, yeah. I didn't yes. know anybody knew yeah, about. That's that's a cult. That's yeah, a cult it's a cult classic. classic. What I is know anybody in knew about for that. mature? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? He looks so cute, though. Yeah. The big. He was. Big big he was a character big in, big in uh, Diddy Kong Racing for N64, yes. and that was the yeah. first 3D yeah. game yeah. that yeah. I've ever played. And I was like, "Oh, Conker from from Diddy Kong Racing. Can I get that?" And my mom looked at me. He's like, "No, you, you can't play that game." You get <laughs> Good call. No. I thought he was drinking no. a soda. It wasn't soda. <laughs> I mean, it was a fizzy drink that made him happy. I guess it's a type of, type of drink. Oh, man. My mom was the opposite. Congress bad for She's just it. like, okay, I guess it's a squirrel. Whatever <laughs> keeps you, whatever keeps y'all quiet yeah. on the couch. But I had no idea that. That game had such an impact on um, other people. I was just like me and my brother. We just like um, I don't know. We like we tried that game out um, because of a friend that came over and and had it um, at one point. And they're like, "Oh yeah, let's play this game." And we're like, "Oh, this is amazing. Let's go get it, mommy. Can you buy this for us?" And she's just like, "Okay." And then that ruined. What did I tell you our... about being stupid? You don't get a book. <laughs> That's, Dang. That game probably got me cussing. That was the game that got us cussing and exploring that more mature life at freaking nine years old, ten years old. Whatever. You had much more chilled parents than I did. <laughs> <laughs> My mom would have looked at that and been like, uh, why are you asking? You know the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, My mom was very much the, I'll buy you the game you're old enough for. Yep. So. No, I'm, I'm looking at a. I'm looking yeah, at a did. Conqueror's Bad Fur Day on the Wikipedia. It came out in 2001, so that was after my mom passed away. So I think it had to have been my dad or something. Even if he had to draw the line saying I can't play it, it had to be really bad. So I think that was him that drew the line. And he's oh, usually God. really laid back. So no, son, too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my mom had no. I- was just totally oblivious about what that game was about because you know the it's a video game it's, it's just a kid's game that's the impression so sure why not it's for um, children uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> here we are pert near all in our 30s and we're still playing yeah that's when my dad mentioned that before <laughs> um just actually a couple days at dinner is like yeah you've been playing games for so long and we thought you'll grow out of it but here you are and I'm just like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> and, and and now you co-own a video game yeah, development right. studio. <laughs> Never growing out of it. Yeah. <laughs> what what's the saying you say, Grover? Every now and then, like it's. Getting older is not a not not a choice, but uh, growing. I out have is. never said that ever. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I do not. Recall. I do not recall. <laughs> you say something similarly to that, or something like that. I swear, you say that. I, I I I swear, I'm not gaslighting you, Paul. I have never said that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Paul, I think it's time for you to use the sleep. <laughs> I, I think it's time to put take Paul uh, back. <laughs> the, the sun's getting yeah. really low. 
And uh, listener, I don't want to gaslight you or anything, but this is one of the best episodes. Not only because Jabari's here, <laughs> but because uh, we're all here. And we just want you to feel the love of all of us here at Women D. And I, we want you to rate, th- rate this. Go ahead and rate it as high as you can, whatever that is. I promise we're not going to yell at you when you come back if you give us a lower rating. We might be disappointed at the way I'm disappointed in Shadow. Um, yeah, talk about space. it on the Tweety Space or the Facey Bird. Or the, <laughs> yeah. The Twitty Twit. The, twi- the Face Space. <laughs> the Face Space is my personal favorite. And um, go ahead and follow us. Go ahead and, and wishlist our games. Uh, Discord.gg slash Uh Go ahead and... Um, Make sure you follow GNM Plus, a completely free subscription that's lasting longer now than CNN Plus ever did. Thanks, so, Time Order. CNN Plus, if <laughs> if you're listening, please don't sue they, us. With, with what uh, money? They don't even <laughs> exist anymore. <laughs> Time Warner still yeah, exists. Yeah. They Warner have regular CNN, yeah. which nobody yeah. should watch. <laughs> Pet- Petra Farm remembers. Oh, no, we have our we have our Discord, and, uh, right? Uh, Discord.gg slash um, where we post these podcast mm-hmm. episodes. Um, and I'll post more of my thoughts on gaming news over there as well. So yeah, make sure to, to go yeah. go visit our Discord. And then eagerly await Jabari's announcement for the release of uh, Spellbearer later this year. Maybe it'll be in June. No, it ha- it has no, to be the exact no. same time as the Xbox conference, <laughs> so we get completely drowned out, <laughs> and nobody hears yeah. about it. Perfect. I'm, I'm perfect. 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 Flawless. <laughs> Nailed we, it. We June twelfth. Assignment. <laughs> Eleven a.m. That's what Jabari announces. <laughs> it. That's Hashtag yeah, that's Xbox. Another part of the episode. Uh, <laughs> 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 Sloppy noodles and understanding the assignment. The women Oh man, I'm crying. <laughs> Sloppy potatoes. Oh. All right, y'all. I've been Paul. And Jabari. Machado. And I'm Grover. And this has been the On a Win podcast. Y'all keep it nerdy. Mm-hmm.